All right, uh, we are at section uh, 6.3, motion in accelerated frames. Um, if you have not watched the uh, video at the bottom of module four, the chapter four module, there is a, uh, uh, it's about a 27 minute video uh, on, on frames of reference. I highly recommend that you watch it. It's not required but I think it'll help give you a better understanding of what we're talking about in this, uh, in this discussion. Uh, we're looking at an air hockey table and an air hockey table uh, that's on a, uh, uh, a train. And when you're inside the train, that is your frame of reference. And if uh, under two conditions, the hockey puck would appear to the little air hockey puck would appear uh, to be stationary. And that is when the train is stationary, the air hockey puck would be stationary. Or if the train is moving at a constant velocity, that is zero acceleration, um, constant velocity equals zero acceleration. So under those two conditions, the hockey puck would tend to stay uh, still. But if you had, if you're on that train and the hockey puck uh, were, let's say, in the center of the ta table and the train suddenly began to, to lurch forward and move in one direction, the hockey puck would appear to just suddenly move in the opposite direction. Um, and it, you, would, you would say, oh, well, what is this force that is causing the hockey puck to move in the opposite direction? It's not really its own inertia wants it to – stay stationary so when the the uh train moves in one direction the hockey puck would stay in the opposite direction now let's take the case where the train is moving at a constant velocity and the hockey puck is there if it were to very slowly start braking to, to where the acceleration is now in the negative direction uh because it's slowing down the hockey puck would appear to go forward um, and if the braking were so subtle, you would say, what's causing the puck to, to go forward? It would seem to be that a fictitious force were uh, pushing it, but it's simply the fact that you're, uh, you're viewing the hockey puck in an accelerated frame. There is an acceleration on the train that you're, uh, uh, you're not viewing. You're, you, because you are on the train, you, uh, you're not viewing it, even though in reality you would probably feel uh, a sense of motion from from the either the uh, train lurching forward or coming to a stop. Uh, sorry about the dogs barking. We live with four dogs and three cats, so it's just a reality that we have to live with. Um, okay, let's. Um, so a fictitious force is an apparent force that seems to act on any mass described in an accelerating that is non-inertial frame of reference. Real force is always, uh, uh, there's always interactions between two objects uh, where you can't identify the second object for a fictitious force. And we'll see that in what people call a centrifugal, uh, a centrifugal force, not a real force, but it's a real experience just inertia uh, of an object uh, having showing an apparent force. Um, okay, and here's a, here's a very good example. You, you remember my, this is similar to the, the clothing in a uh, washing machine tumbler uh, being restrained by the wall of the washing machine. Well, here we have a car turning to the left, uh, uh, it, from the diagram, it looks like it's turning to the left at a constant speed. And from the passenger's frame of reference, the force appears to push her toward the right door, but it is a fictitious force. The only thing that's making her go to one direction is the fact that her inertia wants to keep her going straight, but the fact that the car is turning, she want, wants to go straight, but the both the friction of uh, the seat of the uh, chair, the uh, the seat of the uh, passenger seat, and the door and the seat belt all restrain her and cause a centripetal 
force inward. Her own inertia wants to keep going straight by Newton's uh, first law, but the uh, the door and the friction of the seat keeps her uh, it, it makes her turn to the left along with the car. Uh, relative to the, to the reference frame of the earth, the car seat applies a real force friction toward the left on the passenger, causing her to change direction along with the rest of the car, not only the seat, but the, uh, uh, the car door. So the fictitious force is outward. The real force is inward, the, supplying the centripetal force and thus the centripetal acceleration. Um, okay, uh, if, if uh, we're, we're gonna look at this other fictitious force, um, I don't know if this will work. Let's try it. Uh, let's stop the share and let's um, share the um, this video. I'm gonna see if it works. So right at uh, minute 17, uh, you get this. Uh, you see this reenacted, and you see the puck. Uh, appearing to just go in a circle. Uh, What's happening this time? Why doesn't the puck move straight across the table as it did before? Okay, so let's, let's uh, uh, go back to the um, uh, PowerPoint and we see this uh, acted out. Do you? It, you see two uh, people on a um, merry-go-round. Merry now, it's not as severe as the, the video showed. And again, if you haven't watched that video on frames of reference, I highly recommend it. If the, uh, let's just read the, the boxes here. By the time TF, T final, uh, that the ball arrives at the other side of the platform, your friend is no longer there to catch it. According to this observer, the ball, the ball follows a straight line path um, consistent with, new, with Newton's laws. In other words, an observer um, at outside would see that the, the ball is traveling um, in a straight line. So you toss a ball to, to your partner on the opposite side, but by the time you get there, uh, the, the, your friend has moved. So in the left-hand view, that's the reality. That's what's really happening. In the uh, right-hand view, the friend, it appears that the ball has gone to the, uh, to the left, just as in the short piece of video that I showed you, that, that little puck seems to go around in a circle. It's the same type of effect. If you watch the video, you'll see that the gentleman uh, pushing the little puck is on a spinning table, just like there's a spinning merry-go-round here. So from your friend's point of view, the ball veers to one side during its flight. Flight. Your friend introduces a fictitious force to explain this deviation from the expected path. There is no real force. It's just the fact that she, your, uh, the recipient of the ball, is in an accelerated frame, uh, and so there appears to be a, a force. Um, okay, here's a quick quiz. Again, I highly recommend that you watch that video on frames of reference. And you can start at uh, minute 17 to see the effect uh, and see the explanation. Okay, consider the passenger in the car making a left turn in the figure. Which of the following is correct about forces in the horizontal direction if she is making contact with the right-hand door? The passenger is the is in equilibrium between real forces acting to the right and real forces acting to the left. Uh, the passenger is subject only to real forces acting to the right, or the passenger is subject only to real forces acting to the left. And none of these statements are, is true. That's the option. Well, the only real forces are acting to the left, and that's the friction from the seat. It's the car door. Uh, so those are the real forces acting on the passenger. Uh, and I think that's it. Well, yes, that's the end of this section, section 6.3.
Uh, we'll go on with 6.4 in the next uh, uh, in the next video.